AI at the Grammys, a pro-human advertising campaign, and new research finds LLMs are 20 times faster than people. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news that you need in five minutes or less. We start today with a study that I think will surprise no one, but is still hugely important. Refuel is an AI company that just raised around $5 million, whose focus is on cleaning and labeling data for all sorts of different types of business applications. Now, they recently did a study across a wide variety of data sets in which they found that LLMs are able to label data as well as humans in terms of accuracy, but for much cheaper and much faster. In fact, they say LLMs can label text data sets 20 times faster and seven times cheaper than human counterparts. Now, when it comes to accuracy, GPT-4 performed best out of the box with 88.4% agreement with ground truth as compared to 86% for skilled human annotators, so actually slightly better than human. The types of data sets that were part of this study included online banking queries, US SEC filings, toxicity detection and public user comments, product data from Walmart and Amazon, company descriptions from Wikipedia, science exam questions, and more. So again, a really wide-ranging set of data. OpenAI, Anthropic, Hugging Face, and Google all had LLMs that were considered as part of the study. Now, while GPT-4 was the most performant of these models, numerous other models also achieved strong performance of above 80% agreement with ground truth at one-tenth the cost of the GPT-4 API. I don't think this is all that surprising, but it is a great example of the type of rote work that is likely to be automated away. For people who are paying attention to this, some will see in this the destruction of an entire category of jobs, but others will see a freeing up of human capacity for other types of higher order thinking. Next up in news that surprises no one, 92% of developers, according to a new GitHub survey, are using AI in the workplace. Not only does this cohort represent early adopters in general, It's also one of the areas where there has been the fastest development of new tooling to open up these possibilities. Remember, before Windows started rolling out Copilot across the entire platform, Microsoft had Copilot in GitHub. As Chris Kashtanova puts it, AI isn't programming's future, it's its present. Speaking of AI and programming, our main AI breakdown today is about something called GPT Engineer. This is exploding on GitHub right now with tons of developers piling on, and it's basically an AI agent that can write an entire code base with a prompt. We'll discuss where it came from, what people are using it for, and what the implications are a little later. For now, let's move over to the policy side of AI. Last week, of course, the European Parliament passed a draft of the AI Act. Now, there are still a number of bureaucratic processes through which the AI Act could change in some details, but by and large, it represents the most comprehensive legislation we have on AI from a global power to date. As we discussed last week, a lot of the EU AI Act was written in a previous time, a pre-ChatGPT era. And so much of it has to do with how government, such as law enforcement, uses AI as opposed to regulating generative AI specifically. But given the rise of generative AI, they did graft on a few different provisions, and those are some of the most controversial so far. One of them is a rule that foundational models, whether it's closed source or open source, will have to create a comprehensive accounting of the data that they're trained on. Some developers say that this isn't practical or is unworkable and would bring existing LLMs into non-compliance almost immediately. In response, Stanford University researchers have looked into whether the existing foundation models from companies like OpenAI and Google would actually pass muster. They organized the AI requirements into a number of categories, including data sources, data governance, copyrighted data, compute, energy, capabilities and limitations, risks and mitigation, evaluations, testing machine-generated content, member states, and downstream documentation, and then gave each of the models a score out of four for each of those different categories. Hugging Face's Bloom model would be the most compliant right now with 36 out of 48 possible points with this Stanford scoring system. And of the other big guys, Google scored a 27 out of 48, OpenAI had a 25 out of 48, Meta had a 21 out of 48, Stability AI had a 22 out of 48, and pulling up the rear was Anthropic's Claude with just a seven out of 48. Now, the researchers note that a lot of places where companies lost points wasn't necessarily because they were out of compliance with the EU regulations, but because there wasn't documentation available to show that they actually were in compliance. They write, our work indicates where each foundation model provider can improve. Our work indicates where each foundation model provider can improve. We highlight many steps that are low-hanging fruit, such as improving the documentation made available to downstream developers that build on foundation models. Overall, they say, we find that foundation model providers unevenly comply with the stated requirements of the draft EU AI Act. We believe that all providers can feasibly improve their conduct independent of where they fall on this spectrum. Meanwhile, over in the UK, Rishi Sunak's government is taking its own steps towards better AI alignment and AI policy, allocating £100 million for a new UK AI task force. 
Over the weekend, the UK announced that tech entrepreneur Ian Hogarth, who is also a prolific AI investor and frequent commenter on AI risk and AI safety issues, would be leading up that task force. Ian co-founded Songkick and sold that company to Warner Music in 2017, and for the last five years has authored an annual State of AI report. Ian concludes his announcement thread by saying, I am fundamentally optimistic about the potential for science and technology to transform our lives for the better. The opportunities for AI to be a force for good are truly remarkable, but we need to do it safely. Now, staying on the theme of how AI might change things, the Grammys have come forward with their own policies around AI use in music. On Friday, the Recording Academy announced that artists who use AI in their songs can still submit them for awards. There just has to be what they call, quote, meaningful human authorship. However, songs that are fully generated by AI are not eligible and will be banned for the purposes of the Grammys. Between the Grammys then soft approving AI and Paul McCartney using AI to help the Beatles release their quote unquote last record, it seems like the trajectory for AI music is firmly focused in one and one direction only. Lastly, this week, the annual Cannes Lions Advertising Festival happens in France, and so it's only appropriate that we close on an advertising campaign for the real world. Camera maker Nikon, who of course faces some pretty significant headwinds when it comes to their core business model, has just released a new campaign called Don't Give Up on the Real World. It's actually a really cool campaign. They're taking what is clearly meant to be a mid-journey prompt and overlaying it on a photo that was shot on a Nikon camera in the real world, but that looks like it was generated by AI. The tagline of the campaign is don't give up on the real world. Now, outside just a really beautiful reminder of how amazing the world that we live in is, it's notable to me that we're already at the point where companies and industries are now feeling like they have to actively lobby against artificial intelligence in order to secure their future destiny. Fascinating times we live in for sure. That's it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying the AI Breakdown, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.